if you don't health optimize the brain before you use this uh, performance, you're gonna exact a toll on the brain. Right, because yeah. they do make you better at doing specific types of tasks. What is beneficial for you as an organism is not necessarily what the cell thinks is beneficial for you. You're taking Adderall, you know you're not doing something that's gonna be healthy for your brain, but you may feel great. But the thing that uh, you don't get with the satisfaction of finishing work, it's like you have this long list, you finish it one by one, it's like that, <laughs> right? Hello everybody, this is Dr. Scott Schur. I am the Chief Operating Officer of Transcriptions and Health Optimization Medicine and Practice. I'm also a board certified internal medicine physician, Dr. Ted. Um, Dr. Teda Chikoso, I'm also a doctor of medicine. I'm trained, researched, and worked in many areas, including pharmacology and toxicology, interventional neuroradiology, medical informatics, artificial intelligence, social responsible finance, and I am also the founder of Prescriptions and Health Optimization Medicine and Practice Association. The founding pioneer. Okay, awesome. So today we're going to watch a video on nootropics. This is something we know a little bit about, so I'm excited to dig in here and see what we got. Or don't. What are like the most popular nootropics? It depends what you define as nootropic because a lot of people think nootropic and they think things like Adderall, Modafinil, which are not. Those are amphetamines, right? Adderall is a combination of two amphetamines, slightly different in how they work. And then Modafinil is like a dopamine reuptake inhibitor and it does some other stuff, but that's the main mechanism of action. But those are things that manipulate neurotransmitter release and function or reuptake in the brain, but they're not necessarily cognitive enhancing. They're more like sacrifice brain function in the long term for short term benefit, essentially. So those are not going Going to be like neuroprotective like a real nootropic would be something like alpha gpc which is used in like trying to attenuate alzheimer's progression or something uh and then that. if you're deficient in choline in your diet you could otherwise utilize it as a you know normal healthy individual and get some like cognitive enhancement out of it information retention memory formation mental clarity etc he's talking about nootropics but i think he's forgetting or not realizing that there's a huge spectrum here the types of things that he's talking about like adderall modafinil mm -hmm. these are nootropics Mm -hmm. And this is something that you actually decided four or five years ago to help people understand better because there's such a, a difference in the types of things that can help the brain, right? I think there's uh, two things happening here is a lack of definition yes. and the second is lack of classification. Yes. Uh, it was Cornelio Georgia, I think, if I'm pronouncing his name correctly, who named this nootropic uh, because he was working on piracetam, right? That was uh, the origin of this. The the uh, way I uh, reclassified nootropics really is health optimizing nootropics, right? These are everything that you measure in the uh, metabolom that you have that the body uses and that you have to use like he mentioned uh, choline. Uh, cho uh, choline and uh, these other things uh, you can measure these levels yes right and and you could actually give them uh, supplementation as part of a balancing regimen and they would be classified as health optimizing nootropic l-tyrosine right? is a good one too right yeah. this is a, a this yeah. amino acid that increases some of your uh, your neurotransmitters yeah. as well, so this is yeah, another uh, one, right? Uh, dopamine, right? right exactly. uh, and then norepinephrine, right? right? And uh, also your tryptophan, right? Uh, increases your, uh, you know, 5-HTP would increase the serotonin levels and right. so on. So this is health optimization nootropics. These yeah. are the ones that are supporting the brain. Yes, it yeah. has a very sweet name, Han, right? Han. <laughs> health optimization nootropics. Or Han. And, yeah. <laughs> and what they're talking about here are what I call performance optimization nootropics, right? right? If you don't health optimize the brain before you use this uh, performance, you're gonna uh, exact a toll on the brain. Right. You know, you're not necessarily brain. destroying, right. right? But you're actually initially decreasing its uh, return to an uh, optimal state. Like modafinil, for example, is used by uh, fighter pilots in right. Canada for right. dog fighting, right? right, right. Yeah. And without any uh, drop in cognitive performance, yeah, you're for actually forcing your brain to perform and it's performing flawlessly and so on and so forth, but your body will take a toll afterwards, right? right? right, right. Uh, because uh, when you abuse it, you know, the body will, the body actually, we don't trust the body enough, but the body actually knows how to balance itself. However, the balancing usually occurs at the cellular level. Right. So what is beneficial for you as an organism is not necessarily what the cell thinks is beneficial for you, mm -hmm. right? It mm -hmm. will think of what's benefit, uh, beneficial of itself, like cancers, for example. Right, It's a right. protective mechanism of cells, right? So when we're talking about a performance enhancing or performance optimizing mm -hmm. nootropic, Adderall and modafinil would fall into that category because yeah. they do make you better at doing specific types of tasks. Mm -hmm. It would be memory, it might be wakefulness, it might be you know, cognitive function in other mm -hmm. ways. Mm -hmm. But the downside to using these, especially long term, is that you are depleting these various neurotransmitters yeah. And depleting all the precursors to these as well, which yeah. causes some symptoms. Again, you're stressing yeah. them out, and right. you're also causing receptor downregulation. Talk down about that. What that means? Just so for a second. I've tried Adderall. I fucking love it. <laughs> it's 
it's like you feel like Superman. But the thing that uh, you don't get with the satisfaction of fish finishing a work, it's like you have this long list, you finish it one by one, it's like, uh, <laughs> right? Uh, there's there's no... There can be a come down and crash too. Afterwards, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and then modafinil is incredible. You know, I tried it for my jet lag. But the reason, for, the, the reason I don't like modafinil that much is I found out for my Asian patients especially, they get hypertension. Mm, right? Yeah, uh, headaches. And, and I, I was wondering how come, you know, I was using it, I was just uh, jet lagged and I was uh, using modafinil to cope for the first three days and uh, I was having this severe headache. Mm, and, mm -hmm. you know, even at my age, I'm a 120, 80 kind of guy, right? right. And, uh, and I, I saw my uh, blood pressure was like 140, uh, which is unusual for me. Right, high for you, yeah. Yeah, yeah it's yeah. high for me. Uh, so they, they are useful for short-term purposes. It's not only health optimization of tropics, right? They're just a health optimization of tropics are just a subset. Right. Because, for example, when you give niacin, right, to a person, it will just go, go to the brain, right? It will go to all the cells of the body. Calling them as nootropic is really more like reclassifying them as a health optimizing nootropic where all cells in the body actually use them, but in the brain, it becomes a nootropic. It, it enhances your cognitive function. For me, the primary function of nootropics should be neuroprotective, right? right? Before you even overclock the brain, you know, you have to protect it. You cannot really optimize performance without prior health optimization, right? Right, right. So I like saying that there can be no true performance of uh, optimization without prior health optimization. Right, right, yeah. You talk about that a lot, right? And we talk about how the way you want to think about formulating or maybe even supplementing if you're going to use performance optimization nootropic, you should think about using a health optimization nootropic at the same time. And yeah. obviously the ideal situation is that you're relatively health optimized already mm -hmm. so that if you do clock your brain that you have a pretty good way of going back to your steady state, right? But Yeah, I, I actually, you know, I looked at the everything that's available there, what's actually health-missing nootropic and also a performance optimizing nootropic at the same time. And luckily for me, uh, what I found is methylene blue, yeah. right? That's where I actually started formulating our products uh, with methylene blue in them and did find out, right, that that NIH had studies on using 8 milligrams of methylene blue for cognitive decline, 16 milligrams for Alzheimer's and so on. Yeah. So since combination Han and Pan is very long. I just call them Blue Tropic because the exemplary of the class is uh, methylene blue. Right, so right. it has the capacity both to be a health optimization nootropic, yeah. supporting energy metabolism, yeah. mitochondria, and a performance optimization nootropic as well because it actually increases some of the neurotransmitters in your yeah, brain like norepinephrine, dopamine. It can dopamine. serve yeah. as an MAO, right, yeah, an inhibitor. Yeah. And then also in other formulations, right, you have something like nicotine and caffeine. Yeah. In addition, you have methylene blue and CBD, right? Yeah. So methylene blue and CBD, these are your Hans, right? Yeah. These are things that are supporting, or, well, nothing blues both, but then you have CBD, mm -hmm. which is your health optimization nootropic. Yeah. So I think what we're trying to say in this is that there are different categories of nootropics. Mm -hmm. That classification is really important, mm -hmm. that all of these have their place, mm -hmm. but just kind of know what you're getting into, right? Yeah. If you're, you're taking Adderall, you know you're not doing something that's gonna be healthy for your brain. Right. But you may feel great for six to eight hours if you really need it, and it's okay for you to do. It's uh, like the definition of health and fitness, right? Ah, yes. Uh, Health equals A plus B plus C, the absence of disease, uh, you know, uh, balance between anabolic and catabolic processes according to cycle of life of organism. But fitness is another, it has a goal. So fit for what? Fit for what? Uh, you may be healthy, but are not fit to run a marathon. You may be fit to run a marathon, but you're not healthy. So fit to have sex. Yeah, uh, <laughs> yeah, fit to have sex. Uh, notice the advertisements for erectile dysfunction drugs, right? right. Make sure you're fit for sexual activity, not healthy for sexual activity, right? Performance optimizing nootropics are that, like Adderall and modafinil, right? Caffeine, you, you, nicotine. Yeah, is, you, yeah. You, can, you, can, you can perform the function, but you're not necessarily, it's not necessarily healthy for you. Thank you, Ted. So anybody listening, just remember this was not medical advice. Please make sure you speak to your physician or healthcare provider before making any decisions regarding nootropics or anything else that you feel would require medical supervision.